Welcome to the program. New measures to combat suicide, which nationally claims 2,000 lives a year, and to give extra support to men contemplating self-harm, formed the centrepiece of the government's election campaign today. For his part, opposition leader Tony Abbott used a fish market as a backdrop to announce his marine park policy, and his immigration spokesman wheeled out Nauru's foreign minister to extol the virtues of offshore asylum seeker detention centres. It was also the day for Kevin Rudd, finally, to utter the name of his successor and for claims to emerge that Julia Gillard had opposed the government's paid parental leave scheme in Cabinet. Political editor Heather Hewitt. It seemed a good idea for that all-important photo opportunity. Take her over to the filleting table over here. Campaigning in Mackay in the marginal seat of Dawson, Tony Abbott strolled into the local fish markets, media entourage in tow, to try his hand at fish filleting. Well, I'm not sure that I'm passing this test, I'm afraid, though. He may now think it best to stick to his day job. Hey, now look at that, eh? You know, now, there you go. It may not be Master Chef. And the reason for all of this? So he'd have the right backdrop for this announcement. The coalition in government will immediately suspend the marine protection area process which is threatening the livelihoods uh, of many people in the fishing industry. For Julia Gillard there'd be no messy fish filleting today and indeed as has been the way of her campaign so far not too much interacting with the public at all. Mental health was her focus to try to counter criticisms her government has not done nearly enough in the area. I am very pleased to announce that if re-elected, as a government, we will invest in suicide prevention and support services. It will be to the tune of $277 million on a range of measures including more frontline counselling services. And we want to reach out to men, uh, 2,000 Australians committing suicide each year, 75% men. We've obviously got to have a particular outreach strategy for men. It's a very important issue uh, and uh, obviously in broad terms uh, I'm pleased to see the government uh, doing more in this area. With the rider that the government still has a lot of work to do to address mental health and match the opposition's $1.5 billion plan and experts in the field agree from policy to the personal. And something shifted on the campaign trail today, with the line of media questioning going to places not usually publicly canvassed. For example, was Julia Gillard's emphasis on male suicides aimed at finding another role for her partner Tim Matheson, who's already a government appointed but non-paid men's health ambassador? This is a government package that would be delivered by the government. Uh, it's not a package that's been put together because I see any uh, role for uh, Tim in this package. This is a government package to work through the services that have been identified. There was more, this time going to Julia Gillard's marital status. Will you be happy to be the first de facto couple living in the lodge or are we to expect a prime ministerial wedding? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, to a bridesmaid? <laughs> uh, you know, a best man. We could... Uh, look, uh, I, I, I make... Uh, well, uh, uh, num num number one, um, you know, decisions about me getting married are not just made by me, if I could make that point. <laughs> uh, n num number two, uh, decisions in my personal life uh, I'll make for personal reasons. Um, uh, that's... Uh, you know, it's my life and uh, I'll make uh, my personal choices about it. As for Tony Abbott, suggestions the opposition has been playing the family card raised questions as to why he had his daughter Louise campaigning with him today. Uh, look, I'm just really pleased uh, to have Louise with me today. Uh, it's uh, great to have her on the campaign trail. Tony Abbott was also scrutinised over a media report that a Liberal MP was briefing journalists on Julia Gillard's lack of a husband and children. Uh, family status shouldn't be at stake. Gender shouldn't be at stake. It's simply the policies and the competence which are the issues in this campaign. If Tony Abbott overplays his family and married status, and we have had several references to it so far, he's heading into potentially dangerous territory, and he seems to have worked that out. 
There's a limit to what voters will tolerate when it comes to opposition tactics on Australia's first female Prime Minister, who happens to be childless and unmarried. For Greens leader Bob Brown, it's all too much. Now, Julia Gillard uh, I, uh, has been subject in the last 24 hours to some quite nasty uh, attacks, not just from the opposition but in the media, and, I, and I'm frankly disgusted by it. She, uh, she, she's got... Uh, her own partner and, and her relationship with that partner and that's, uh, that's a, a great strength to any uh, Member of Parliament. No one would dispute that as the campaign moved on to safer and more traditional ground, the issue of pork barrelling. The National Audit Office released a report on the government's half billion dollar regional grants program and found projects in Labor seats were more likely to be funded. 42% of Labor electorates got grants compared to 18% of coalition seats. The audit reporters, I'm advised, uh, finds that uh, the, the, uh, when we're looking at the program, the distribution of uh, projects and funding under the program uh, is basically proportional to the number <coughs> of seats held by political parties in the House of Representatives and the four biggest projects are in non-ALP held seats. Of course, it's public perceptions that matter here. And on that front, the opposition today eagerly promoted a meeting with Nauru's Foreign Minister, Dr Karen Keki, to discuss that country's willingness to accept an offshore refugee processing centre ahead of East Timor. But the Prime Minister uh, of our country has failed to grasp, and that is the constitution of Nauru uh, enables the President to enter into a, an agreement with Australia uh, to reopen the centre at Nauru. Uh, there are no constitutional barriers. That can be done today. Well, should there be a request from the Gillard government, we would also accept that invitation. This is nothing more, nothing less than a political stunt, an attempt to again trick the Australian public into believing that somehow there's a quick fix uh, on uh, boat people, uh, human trafficking uh, and asylum seeker issues. But this is a campaign shaping up on both sides as one of quick fixes on many issues instead of tough policy decisions so as to appease those crucial voters in marginal seats. But there's one thing Labor can't fix and that's the constant reminder of Kevin Rudd. I fully support the re-election of the government and I fully support the, re the election uh, of Prime Minister Gillard. The former Prime Minister was basically put on notice at the weekend by one of Julia Gillard's most loyal supporters, Education Minister Simon Crean, that he had to be a team player if he wanted to rejoin Cabinet ranks. After a news report on Channel 9 tonight that Julia Gillard didn't back the paid parental leave scheme when the so-called Gang of Four, including Kevin Rudd, Wayne Swan and Lindsay Tanner, were discussing it, some of her colleagues are angrily pointing the finger at Rudd or his supporters as the source. The big question now is how Julia Gillard handles it from here.